Hey guys, welcome to the Talk Nerdy to Me podcast. I'm Alex. And I'm Kirk. And this is the podcast where we talk about all things nerdy. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some tech talk. All right. Well, welcome to podcast number six. This is number six. Right? Yeah, yeah this is number six. Yeah, right. We did 5.5 that nobody got to see. That, that was just a test. That didn't was. count. That was like two minutes. But this is six. So I think we've uh, sorted out a few small issues that we had. Definitely. And number one is that camera, this one right here. It was uh, it was recording at the wrong settings, and yeah. I thought I couldn't open up the other ones. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, but Macs don't like ABC HD. You have to like work around getting to their file system, mm-hmm. but we can do it, and uh, so we can record at full 1080. It was recording at 1080 by 1440. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and now it's 1080 by 1920. Yeah, so Perfect. that should be good. Yeah, and uh, exciting news for me, I have made a commitment i am yes. going with the sony a6300 i uh, i found a great used deal here and uh so it's actually on layaway at a pawn shop here but i should have that by next week so good old birthday gift from the parents but it's gonna be pretty awesome that'll and be that'll sweet uh, to that'll upgrade our setup even that'll definitely further. upgrade this setup and yep. just uh, any other projects that we're doing too it'll be huge yep absolutely so what are our topics for today well, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about cameras again. We again. talk about cameras a lot. We're, yeah. But there's a lot of cameras. There is, and this is an exciting time for cameras. It like, is. really exciting time because you have so much going on. It's not mm-hmm. even fit. Like, everybody within the last month has been like, hey, mirrorless. We're all doing it. Yeah. Full frame mirrorless. So, we have Canon, of course. Everybody mm-hmm. knows about the USR. Mm hmm. Nikon's got their Z7 and Z6. Z7 is available now, I believe. And the Z6 is coming out, which mm-hmm. is a little bit okay. cheaper. Uh, then Panasonic. 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 <laughs> I will forever call it that. Yeah. It's just like that uh, iPhone. So um, <laughs> so the Lumix S1 uh, slash S1R. Uh, then Zeiss. I, I, I don't know if you've seen this, but I so Zeiss usually makes lenses and stuff, but they have come out with their own full frame camera. Mm hmm fixed lens 35 millimeter full frame point and shoot basically okay and it has lightroom built in so you can just edit your photos on the camera i don't know the point of it yeah (laughs) like i I guess it has wireless capabilities too and it can upload directly to yeah it can do everything right from it so it's like a little mini studio but like it looks incredibly uncomfortable too so we'll see how that i haven't seen it so i'll take a look yeah go go ahead and take a look it's it's a weird camera and it's Mm -hmm. fixed like you'd think for a full frame, is that the first full frame fixed camera in forever? I don't know. But yeah, and then of course we have the old dogs in the block with Sony. Mm-hmm. And the big question is, are these companies going to be able to beat Sony with where Sony has such a like a foot in the door? Like they've been doing it for years now. They've got two legs in the door. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Like they're miles ahead currently with their products that have been on the on on the lot for a while and. The Sony A7, when it first came out, it had a lot of issues, but they're onto the Mark III now, which, you know, they've, they've ironed out a lot they've of They've ironed out a lot of stuff. I mean, there's still some overheating issues people talk about, but... Yeah. <laughs> the overheating issues, yeah. So I'm going to have to overcome that with the 6300, but I think we'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's still definitely lots of lots of issues there, but they've had three iterations to work out those bugs. Definitely. I mean, Canon has their bugs with the EOS R. Arguably, they have them on purpose because they don't want to take away from purchases that people make of their other full frame cameras yes that's a touchy subject but when people are saying that they're going to switch from their um big people too yeah their uh, 1dx's down to the us r peter mckinnon making the switch making the switch now i mean there are a few things that you lose out on you lose out on that 120 yep fps which is something you get at a 1200 hundred dollar sony camera you it's get true. 120, but you know, not full frame, of course, but still, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's going to be also something get I'm it interested out of your, in. your smartphone. Yeah, that's a whole other story. GoPro. <laughs> yeah. Man, GoPro <laughs> oh, Hero 7, we'll, Okay, and we'll come, yeah, and we've got to talk about, since we're talking about cameras and we're talking about new cameras we're getting, yeah. uh, there will definitely be a GoPro, GoPro Hero 7 Black. You just got to figure out how you're going to get it. Joining us soon, yeah. Where are you going to get it? Just going to decide where I'm going to get it. I may be able to get a discount through work, so I got to... Yep figure that out 
Yeah, for sure. And that'd be awesome. I think like the amount of gear we've added to our, our suite in the last like oh, two yeah, weeks like, has been insane. Yeah. So I can't, I'm excited. Like, especially for that seven, that hero seven, just go off on a tangent for a second. Like that has such amazing in-body stabilization. The in-body like, stabilization that is ridiculous. I don't get it's it. It's literally like holding it on a gimbal. Yeah. I remember when we were doing mountain biking videos and like mm-hmm. I had the hero that they came out with not it was just called the gopro hero yeah it wasn't the original but it was like the little black one that you couldn't change the housings mm-hmm. and it wasn't the best i mean it was a cheap one but yeah. man like you couldn't get anything usable with the shake and stuff yeah and you had to have a gimbal and now it's like you don't even need a gimbal you just slap that on your chest and you're good to go yep crazy i'm it's so excited r- for it's ridiculous that. that'll be so good to have yeah because the best thing about that too is like it i mean you can shoot your 1080 up to 240 you can shoot yep. your 4k 60 which is something that most cameras don't have. Most right now. cameras can't do that unless you're getting into eight and nine, ten thousand dollar DSLRs and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Or into actual film cameras, camcorders. Which like high end camcorders. I'm always curious as to why nobody uses them. I mean, there's nothing yeah, really like, why there. Why does no one use camcorders? As yeah, much, right, it for seems video? like such a great idea. Like somebody make a good camcorder with exchangeable lenses and a flip out uh, LCD. Seems yeah, like a, it's the interchangeable lenses is the thing. Yeah, well, like Sony used to do it, and they don't anymore. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, I, I was looking on their website and I couldn't see anything. Under you don't see a lot with them. Now, of course, you go into professional lenses. stuff like with Black and Black Magics and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff like that. Aries, mm-hmm. um, you know, those companies, uh, Canon's own uh, Cine so, line. Yeah. So there's a lot out there, but they're always in the higher end and mainly, you know five thousand dollars plus i'll say mm-hmm. easy so but a lot of them reach. still don't shoot the slow mos and stuff no there are a number of them who don't that yeah don't. yeah like you're black right. magics and stuff like that yeah just don't shoot the strictly slow-mo. kind of um cine style like yeah. it's meant for shooting 24p and that's about it yeah well i mean they have the higher frame rates but not that high yeah and a lot of them like i mean when you think about it i mean there's a lot of slow-mo in movies there is movies with like, this stuff, right? Quite a lot. They also have insane gimbals and like rigs they do. to stabilize sixty frames a second or thirty frames. Yeah, a second they can often do it with a sixty and then slow yeah. it down. And if you watch Peter's video when he descri- explains why he wants to go to this camera, obviously he's coming from one DX. Like the dude's got to have forearms bigger than both my legs. Yeah. So it'd be a huge step down in size for him, and I can understand the want for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited to see how he finds going down to 60. And like you said, it'd be a good challenge. Kind well, of it's a back challenge skills. to do something different, right? Because, I mean, it's kind of cheating. You stick a gimbal and 120 frames a second, and you're getting buttery anything. doesn't matter mm-hmm. what you're doing. It's going to look great. Yeah. So it's uh, it's cool. And um, like that's one of the reasons why I want to get a monopod first before we get a gimbal, or I get a gimbal, because mm-hmm. I feel like develop the skills with the monopod and then i'll translate to better yeah you know and same thing with lighting we need to learn a lot about lighting and stuff but yeah you get something other than pvc light they work (laughs) that one's uh almost not working and this one almost got smashed today but (laughs) something that was very like a variable dimmer or like a dim yeah that'd be good something like that i'm looking at that zeiss uh uh camera here now it's weird the zx1 yep full frame compact it's really weird looking. It does. It looks like it'd be the most uncomfortable it, thing. Yeah, it doesn't look like it would actually be comfortable to hold in your hand. Like, well, I'll say one thing I did notice about the Sony before I, I bought it. Like, it's not going to be the most comfortable thing mm-hmm. for sure. It's it's smaller cameras are going to come with that, but with a cage or something on it and mm-hmm. a little bit of thicker grip, it'll be all right. Yeah. So, which is going completely opposite direction from my, oh my God, setup oh yeah, man so, i've done a I mean, 180 if you, if you go back a couple podcasts and you listen to a couple oh, of our don't. first ones they're so bad <laughs> the, the audio is terrible but and so is the the video well the video's not bad because we still had a good camera yeah, yeah. but um but you would hear uh, some talk about this minimalist uh setup I was setup going we were going for um with your little little sony camera there yep that and, which is in your ipad to edit and... Oh, iPad edit that was a devastating blow. I was so excited for that, and like it's almost there, mm-hmm. and it's still faster than my MacBook and Final Cut. Yeah, or not Final Cut, old than Adobe, old MacBook, old MacBook. Yeah, yeah. not a new MacBook, but yeah. yeah, this thing bit the dust. It's a it's a prop on the death wall. Yeah, all the broken stuff. I I've had it's not just broken stuff though. No, not yet. And we've got working GoPros, and we've got the working cameras back there. But... That that one Fuji does not work anymore. Y- yeah, the Sony does. Sony does. Or Canon. Canon does. Yeah. Canada. Too many different brands. We have a lot, and it's going to be difficult. We're going to have to get some adapters. <laughs> Lens adapters. Lens adapters. Oh, my God. 
Well, we're, but, only, uh, we're only really shooting with two brands. Yeah, so it's not too bad. Sony and Canon. Yeah, unless you know we're coming, to, you know, that black magic or something. Or yeah, something. <laughs> see, and that's the thing, right? Like, I was like, do I even do I just keep saving money until I can buy like the R or something? But I think that's too far out. I think that's uh, yeah, down the road. The thing is, it's I mean, it's not out yet. Yep. So you have to wait for it to actually come out. Yep. And it's a lot more um, and money. And it's quite a bit more money. A lot more. That's an investment. I mean, you look at it. Okay, so the R, I mean, you would assume, you're you just going to get you're gonna get the kit lens with it. You have to because. It's like because it doesn't fit anything else unless no. you use the, the adapter. And if you don't, then you're still getting the adapter. Which, the if you pre-order now, you do get the adapter for free, $130 value. Also, you get the cheapest <laughs> adapter. The, the most expensive adapter has a uh, filter, mm-hmm. which is really It has a sweet. filter be- built into it, yeah. Do you know if the basic adapter uh, adds that ring? The control ring? Oh, I don't know. The I know the higher M one does for sure, but that's cool. That was that was something that was awesome because it adds that functionality to older mm-hmm. lenses. I think Canon really thought that through. I don't see it on the picture, but I mean it's not a full picture either, yeah. so possibly. Yeah, I think. Um, so let's talk about the Canon jump because you got people like Peter McKinnon and they have all these lenses now. They might just go ahead and jump into the four lenses that are available, mm-hmm. but they're limiting themselves in terms of what they can use. So yeah. having the older lenses uh, be able to be adapted and still retain almost 100% of the functionality. Still yeah. going to be just as fast uh, or close to it. You might lose a little bit. Very little. But those 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 adapters look amazing. So mm. I think that's really exciting. Uh, Nikon also has a new mount. So they have the Z mount uh, lenses, mm-hmm. uh, which one of Nikon's problems with video has always been the autofocus. It yeah. just doesn't even come close to anything. Well, that's the thing. The only good autofocus, well, Canon has always been number one. Can Canon always, is always their dual the pixel most, autofocus is insane best, right now. Trust most trustworthy autofocus, yeah. and you can get that all the way down to their six hundred dollar point and shoots, yeah, and, like and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, the SL two is about eight hundred bucks Canadian. Yeah, well, I, I mean my oh yeah, that my even T six I that yep. doesn't have the dual pixel, but it's still yeah, insane. It's Nineteen point dual pixel autofocus does it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh right, it doesn't have the new processor. It doesn't yeah. have the new processor, yes, but it's exactly. still a nineteen point. Yep. It's better better than the SL two because the SL two is only nine points. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, I mean, it's amazing. You haven't had any problems with that. No, I don't use autofocus. No. That's why I don't. <laughs> oh, right. Your it's main very, lens does not yeah. really. Okay, so my main lens that I use for most recording is you know my wide-angle lens here. Um, it's the uh, Canon 10-22mm to millimeter EFS lens with the USM motor in it. Problem with the USM motor versus the STM motor, the newer one. Makes a racket. It is really loud. Great so, glass, like it looks fantastic. It is beautiful. This is like a thousand dollar lens. It's you know, it's incredible. I love shooting with it. Just noisy. I just don't love autofocusing with it. Yeah, it can do it. Because um, I, for a little while, I was trying out actually using the kit lens a little more. And yep. kit lens, you know, it's a good picture, all that. But I mean, as you would. We expect. I mean, it's 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 a kit lens. It, yeah, it's and this is the Sony it's kit. It's very lens. versatile, right? Yeah. But it doesn't. I don't know. That one feels no. cheap to me. It does. It's like just especially very cheap compared to your wide angle. Oh man. I mean, the, the compare difference. the weight. <laughs> that Canon kit lens for the APS-C cameras. Yeah. Is feels lighter than this. It's probably not, but it feels like it, especially when you consider the size I mean, of it. I think it. It feels. It feels. It's close. It's close. It's very close. Yeah. yeah. So, but, so this is the kit lens that I'll uh, I'll have. I'll, I thought it was great. But that's the yes. Yeah, so that's was it? Again? Um, that is 16, 18 to fifty. Eighteen to fifty. Yeah. That's so, not bad. That's, yeah. that's a good range for a kit lens too. I think. Yeah. They also. That's make, pretty close actually. This this is eighteen fifty five. So. Yeah, it's it's very similar, yeah. and uh, I think that's they really also good for make, someone getting started off. It'll it'll cover a wide range of what you need. Your focal points, your preset for a lot a lot of your videos. It's limiting but not it's it's not too limiting everybody hates on kit lenses and it's a big thing if i'm like you see that with canon a lot especially yeah it's hating on this 18 to 55 kit lens and while yes it's a cheap it's a cheap lens in terms of the glass and the overall construction to it yeah i mean it's still a canon lens you know it's going to be pretty good quality well my kit lens survived a car crash yeah so and actually funny my kit lens survived a car crash and my other lenses did not then it got stolen but mm. still but but it's so versatile you can use it for so much right you can like you can use the kit lens you zoom it out to 18 you can vlog with it yeah. usually 
You might have to stick your arm out a little bit more. But... A little tiny bit more, right? But I mean, even using like my using my wide angle lens here, which is really heavy to hold out like that. Um, you know, I don't even have it zoomed out all the way. I'm at like 12 millimeters rather than the 10 that it goes to. Yeah. Right. So at the 18 millimeters on on the kit lens, you're not bad. You can you can you can manage. That. Yeah. You definitely. can manage, and you can shoot a lot of stuff with it. The Canon kit kit lenses now are image stabilized. Yep. Right there. Which you don't get in a lot of Fantastic. lenses. Fantastic. So I think so, and and everybody has one, and it's all like it's cheaper to just buy the camera with the kit lens if you have no other glass. Yeah. Well, when I bought mine, actually, it was cheaper to get the kit lens. Yeah, and it was it, cheaper to get it than not get it. Yeah, just because so. there was a deal on. And right? now you have it, so you're kind of. And then I got it. It's just an extra lens. Stay it's, there forever. You got that stabilization, which is great. You know, you got a, a perks to it, and you can use it. Yep. Now maybe if you get into the higher and full frames like we're talking about here, you probably the kit lens is still insane. Like, so the Nikon Z7, mm -hmm. price point wise, you have to get it with the lens realistically. Mm -hmm. Fifty two hundred bucks Canadian. So it's more expensive. It's the most expensive. It's the most expensive. Now, the Z6, which retains a lot of the same functionality, uh, a lot of great features that the Z7 has, mm -hmm. including 1080-120, which the Canon does not have, comes in at almost $1,000 cheaper with a lens than the USR. It's pretty good. It's so competitive. That, that, that's competitive pricing to the USR. Yep. I don't hear many people talking about Nikon. No one talks about Nikon for no. video. Everyone hates on Nikon. Well, they're just not video cameras. Like everyone they're... literally just hates on Nikon. Like yeah. it's like it's hate, but hatred it, towards Nikon. It is, and it's it's because uh, they're so frustrated. You have a lot of Nikon users probably from before with photos and stuff mm -hmm. that are like, "Where's my video camera? Get me something yeah. good." Well, this is their attempt. I think they're finally trying to like put a bit of effort into it. They have a good autofocus system, provided it's with native lenses. Mm -hmm. It looks a bit too slow with the adapter problem that the USR does not have. And this other thing is about the lenses. Are going to be the lenses you want to use for video? Yeah. Very limiting. What I realized, I don't have them up here, but I remember looking at the Nikon lenses and saying, wow, these are all covering very similar focal ranges. Like there wasn't a wide range. The Canon's four lenses are four lenses, yeah. but there's a pretty good range and they're giving you that adapter. Mm -hmm. So They're giving you that adapter to then use with every other Canon lens like which is definitely by far the best lineup I mean there's a lot of people who shoot Sony but use Canon lens like yeah Canon can glass for sure because like, Canon glass is yeah I think uh, Matt Diabella podcaster I watch a lot he's got L glass on his A7 R2s mm. I think they are something yeah. like that but they look great and they're adapted but probably use them with not autofocus I wouldn't imagine because you're, he does a lot of podcasting so he doesn't need to yeah but but yeah. there's a reason so or Canon glasses is, is as expensive as it is for it the is high end. Lenses. Amazing glass, no yeah. doubt. Now Sony's got some good glass out there. It's funny because I I would argue that some of the cheaper glass like Zeiss, their prime lenses are good, and that's mm -hmm. kind of Sony's native lenses, the Zeiss lenses. But their zoom lenses are like, no, not mm -hmm. for the price. I wouldn't be at it. I thought you're better off buying a Sigma. Yeah. yeah, well, and that's sure. the that's the thing too. You see a lot of people shooting Sony who have like Sigma lenses. Yeah, well, and, and like Sigma's that. got some great, great options there, especially when you yeah, consider price points. Yeah, I think absolutely. Like, uh, eighteen hundred or not eighteen hundred, eight hundred bucks ish for the eighteen to seventy five mil. I think it is. I could be completely wrong there, but the one that everybody uses for product shoots, <laughs> mm -hmm. that thing is great, and it'll get you by. And I think it's like eight hundred bucks, right? So compared to some L glass, that's you know, that's good. Yeah, you're saving a thousand bucks or so. And then Panasonic, Pan, Panasonic, Panasonic. I think we're gonna rename it. Yep, Panasonic. That sounds good. But they have their Lumix S1, and uh, they have 4K60, as well as uh, great weather sealing and dual card slots, which none of the other cameras have. Uh, Canon doesn't have it. Nikon doesn't have it. Yep. Sony doesn't have it. Uh, Nikon does have their own. They have. They don't have SD cards. They use. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. They're great cards. Another reason not to buy Nikon. <laughs> Do you hate Nikon? <laughs> My dad shoots Nikon. You're you're gonna you're gonna get him upset. <laughs> but he only does photos. There's a yeah. I see a lot of photographers yeah. shooting Nikon who get great shots, but you never see anyone doing nope. any video with Nikon. And it's not very worse. rare. And like today's day and age, you need to be doing video if you're a ph photographer. Like. It just you need, yeah you need to because it's just building your brand. I feel like yeah, unless you're like an old school photographer, unless you're, you're settled in, yeah. But like if you're trying to make it, you need to do more than just 
people want to know photos. people want to know a lot more about the photographer like you're seeing Does that yeah uh, actually another good point about a lot of these cameras uh, a lot of them are missing flip out screens mm. and i'm like please just put it in every camera out there point canon <laughs> canon wins no <laughs> doubt about it that is a huge selling feature um that was one of the things i was like 10 I'm... points to canon yeah there you go that we're hey gonna... that was a good little uh that was okay <laughs> yeah we were watching <laughs> we were some watching impressions, some impressions. we're not that good though no <laughs> but I'm, I'm just gonna continue just using my normal british accent for yeah all I, things. <laughs> I can't even do that but yeah that was one of the perks i was like i'm not getting a camera that doesn't have a flip out lens and i did but i'm also saving like 800 bucks so i'm like yeah, and I think what we were planning on getting into more so, we not we're not really going to be concerned that much about it. No, and it can be fixed with a, a monitor. Monitor, or, yeah, if you really want to. It's a little crazy. bit of a like shift. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not the most sleek and agile thing that we're going to have, but it'll work. Nothing is going to be sleek and agile about anything we have except the GoPro. That's about it. Yeah, you you got that right. We should get a. No, GoPros and phones are the only sleek things that we're going to be running here. Yeah, I have our, man, my rig is going to be bulky because I have to get. I'm planning to get an external battery because uh, I've got to reduce that overheating as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Right now, they came out with an update. I think in, indoors we'll be okay with the 6300, and we'll get to that 30 minute time limit. Mm-hmm. But I want to record past that. Yeah, because I'm gonna I can unlock the times pretty easy. The little app. Mm-hmm. But uh, in 1080p, it's fine. It doesn't overheat. So we have no worries, which is the majority of what we're shooting for this. And I think everything perhaps, else... Perhaps we'll shoot a, a podcast sometime. It'll be more than 30 minutes, and we'll shoot it on GoPros. We're going to have to. <laughs> like, <laughs> the GoPro, two GoPros and the Sony, and we'll be fine. Or a phone. Oh, phone, yeah. Phone Phones phone. and GoPros. We're shooting... Okay, next podcast. Be ready for one shot on phones and GoPros. Don't take my word for it. It may be a few podcasts down the road, and it may never happen. Well, it'll be a good test for the <laughs> GoPro. <laughs> no, it'll happen. If you get that GoPro, we'll make it work. Yeah, at we'll least make... like at like a fourth camera angle. Yeah, we'll make it happen at some point. We'll do it like a backward, <laughs> a backwards <laughs> angle, a top down angle. How about that? That would be cool. Good idea. Keep that in mind. I mean, we have a lot. Somebody remind us of that. Yeah, when we get enough good cameras, we have a lot of cameras, just not enough good cameras. A lot of broken cameras. A lot of broken cameras. I'm sorry. If I break <laughs> another camera, I'm gonna cry. Don't break another camera. But yeah. So, and I also have a, a note here on the Fuji X-T3, yes. another interesting camera. Uh, GH5s are amazing choices. They do use micro four-thirds. The X-T3 uses an APS-C size sensor, so it's a step above that in terms of size. Um, APS-C, like, I have, the, I have this stigma against micro four-thirds because of the low-light performance, and I already feel like I want more low-light performance than I'm mm-hmm. getting, but they are fantastic cameras, and they have almost everything you need, like that flip-out screen. Like, like a headphone jack, which some of the lower end can't, can't Sony's don't have. Like that's great. It has a flip out screen, the fifty one hundred. But where are you putting your mic? You're not. So, <laughs> and it's just that was your other problem with oh, your small setup. Man, it was brutal. But forget all that. We're in, it's in the past. I'm still in the small setup, relatively, minus the monitor and, and stuff. If I if I don't get the monitor, <laughs> we're good. You're still gonna be smaller than me. Yes. Yeah, a little bit. It's a heavy camera, though. We'll see how heavy it is. We so, need a scale. So is mine. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I got a scale. We'll but try. yeah, so the X-T3 is coming out. That camera is awesome. It yeah. only has a 1.18 crop uh, in 4K now. That is a crop in an APS-C, which is already cropped in from full frame, mm-hmm. but going to be somewhat comparable to Canon's crop, which... So yeah, so you're going to be looking overall at like similar to 1.6 yeah. like you're going to see on the... Uh, yeah, I think on so. On most Canon out. cameras. Uh, a little more. I think you're already at... 1.6 with an APS-C from a full frame, but it's still, it's cropped in quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of cameras coming out. There like, is. A lot, and it's exciting. I mean, we could get into a whole lot more cameras. This is just like a certain These are range the big of ones. cameras. Like, like, these like... are the mirrorless full frame cameras and a little bit of APS-C stuff, but, and that's why I threw the X-T3 in there because it's such a jump above that GH5. Yeah. And it's a great camera. Like, it looks fantastic. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so... All of them. I, I think Nikon, the Z7 is a great camera, no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling it's a bit late for them. I really do. Nikon's not going to grab a whole lot of audience. Everyone not knows for video. Everyone knows Sony, and they know Canon, and yep. they know Canon's colors. Yes, which is amazing. And now, uh, they know Canon's autofocus, and they know the colors. They know Sony's flat image, which people like. 
Yeah, you do a lot of color grading. Right. It, so you do a lot of color grading, and like a lot of people who are actually like get really into it do like to do their own color grading. Yeah, for that cinematic look, I think the Sony's are great for that. No, Canon as well, of course. But Canon are, already sets your colors really well. Yeah. Now, if you go with something really high end, you can shoot those. Uh, yes. Yeah. Those, those flat shots, but. Yeah, and I think um, one thing like Canon right now is the most reliable option. Absolutely. 100%. Like, I think that EOS R is going to be a fantastic camera. It's you giving me a lot a... of flack right now, but at the same point, I think it is a great camera. Yeah. You pick up a Canon camera for sub $1,000 and you got a great camera, and then you can step up to things like this yep. EOS R. I mean, you can... Okay, so, I mean, you look at your different ranges. You got your T6i, T7i, that range. Yep. Right? Under $1,000, along with the SL2. Um, fantastic camera. Amazing cameras. Like for consumer for level. Consumer level. Or... Most of what you're doing on YouTube great is perfect yeah and then you can step up so that's also your, like your 700d or 750d yeah right take away a zero you got your 70d and your 80d yeah right and even better and the 80d is fantastic camera right now for 1300 uh, yeah about that yeah so right so that's what you'll see a lot of bigger names using yeah in terms of like youtube yep right they'll go to that they won't usually go move on to 5d 6d 70. No, you only really see the people who are focused on the cinematic movement. Either like, on the cinematic or really into photography. Yeah, absolutely. You'll see those guys. Like, no doubt in my the, mind, the, the photography aspect is insane mm -hmm. on that. The biggest are. bonus to, the, like, going to the 7D, 6D range is the is the low light for, yeah. for video. Right? You get better low light with that full frame yeah, sensor. Absolutely. And, so. and then, then you're up to, into a 1DX. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. And, like, that's the price gap's there. But it has everything you would need right now, I think, for a content creator. Well, everything more. Yeah, absolutely. Minus the flip-out screen. Forget about that. But Yeah, what? At that, at that point, what's adding monitor? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're already that big. Yeah. You might as well just keep going. Yeah, for sure. You know, get the biggest mic you can find. Yep. Uh, add on a, a TV on the top of it. And, um, yeah. Oh, and then <laughs> one more interesting fact, the Sony a7 III is going to be still the cheapest option from yes. what I've seen. So it's the top dog right now, has amazing low light performance, has great lenses, uh, maybe not as good as Canon, but great lenses. Great lens options from other Yeah. And brands. if you're looking at like an upgrade path, the cheaper Sonys are still using the same mount. So mm -hmm. you're not limited. Like all these new, like Nikon got a new mount with adapters not really usable in my opinion canon of course you can but still it's an adapter you're losing something there but it's, it's uh, mostly just adding size the yeah big thing. yeah um, but you can get that again you can get that adapter with the filters built into it which is awesome which is really cool yeah and you get you don't any have any uh effects from the filter on the front of the lens it's already behind it so you don't exactly. have any, yeah good idea great on canon i think that was fantastic mm -hmm. but is it enough to dethrone sony because i think especially probably in this area a year ago in this area i don't think so i i think i'm with you there i think people are going to be looking at the price tags looking at those oh, i can do 120 frames i mean second. an a7 II is still a great camera yep a few and, overheating issues but but it's minor for the average joe yep. who wants to get into a camera like this you can work around that 100 percent. definitely the way to go for a lot of people that yep. a7 II um and you're saving so much money compared to that eos r a lot that's that's many more lenses which is going to increase your production value more so than a camera body mm -hmm. like you know the focal ranges you're going to be able to get and again you use those same lenses yeah as you like, move up i'm going to do get to like an a7r so yeah so i plan on buying only lenses that i can use with both aps-c and full frame because mm -hmm. i want that future proof i know in the road down the road I might go for an A7R, whatever that comes out at that time, but I know I have those lenses, so yeah, it's a, I think it's a good upgrade path for sure. Yeah, for sure. So, what do you guys think? Whoever's listening, will Sony <laughs> be dethroned? I'm gonna say no. I would say no, but there's a big but. It's huge. There is a place for Canon's EOS R. I'm in excited, video. yeah, and I'm excited for where that's going to go down the road. Yeah. This is the, just the, the first other camera. brands aren't as big, and it's hard for them to find a, a good place. But there's definitely a big space for that Canon EOS R. Yep, yeah, huge space, huge. 
Absolutely. And uh, I'm really excited for the future because these are just starting. Like, Yeah. Ah, so excited. Lots of good stuff. Hopefully we'll get our hands on some of it. But uh, Definitely at some point. At some point, maybe down the road. Yeah. Keep doing these. If we can get past 20 episodes, we're beating the average. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's about all we have time for. Yeah. Podcast so. number six in the bag. Good stuff. I think it went well. I think so. All right. Peace, guys. Peace out.